Hi, Robin Beaumont here. This is Multiple Regression 3, and um, a practical supplement to Michael Campbell's excellent little book, Statistics at Square 2, Chapter 2. And this is specifically related to his exercise on page 21. We're going to look at how to carry out the analysis he describes in SPSS R, Command and R. As you know, we have one dependent variable, dead space, and several independent variables. We're going to look at two particular independent variables this time asthma status and bronchitis status. And we have this model, this uh, regression model. Dead space can be modelled as a function of asthma plus bronchitis are the two input or independent variables, whichever you want to call them. And because they are both nominal, this is actually a type of ANOVA. And also because the way um, Campbell has structured the data within them, um, they can either be asthmatic, bronchitic, or normal. They can't actually have asthma on bronchitis. So uh, this means that we've actually got an ANOVA type situation. Um, so what we're doing is using multiple regression to actually carry out an ANOVA design. So to do this, we actually need to create two new variables. One are called normal and the other are called condition. So the normal variable I'm going to code as if they didn't have either asthma or bronchitis, they'll get the value 1. And if they've got either asthma or bronchitis, they're diseased and it's coded as a 0. For the condition variable, I'm coding it slightly differently. I'm giving them 1 if they've got asthma, value 2 if they've got bronchitis, and 3 if they're normal. And we can use these for different types of analysis to mimic those described in Campbell's book. So the first thing I'd like to do is actually get some feeling for the um, dead space variable and how it relates to the three s conditions, that is if they've got bronchitis, asthma or if they're normal. Um, so I've got to first of all create my variable which is called normal and I actually do that using a syntax window. So I actually go to file, new, syntax window, alright and that will open a uh, syntax window. I've actually done that already, so I'll open my syntax window now. Here we are, and I've written some uh, SPSSS code, it's called syntax in this. If you hear what it says is compute normal equals 1. So that's going to create a new variable, and it's going to put the value 1 in every single case in our file for that variable. Then it says if the asthma variable equals 1 or the bronchitis equals 1, then normal equals 0. And I've given it a value label here, value labels and for normal, this new variable I created, and it's 1 means normal, 0 equals disease. And I've used this execute command to do it. So if we just look at our data frame there, we have nothing in it. But if we go back to our window, syntax window, and I highlight this, and then press this big button looking thing, it says selection, it'll run that code, it brings up the output window, you can minimise that, and now if we go back to my data, it's created a new variable called normal, and that's giving me the values of those that are diseased as equal to zero, and those are normal equal to one, and if we look in the variable view, we'll see we've got those value labels added there. Right, we also want to create the other variable I was talking about, and if we look down here, we've got the code for that. That's taking uh, a different command here called recode, and it's saying the asthma variable, if it equals 1, will make the condition, this new variable, equal 1, else the condition variable in this new one will equal 3. Then another line says, if the bronchitis variable equals 1, then the condition variable equals 2. So for asthma, we'll get the number 1 in the condition variable. If they've got nothing, they'll get the value 3. And if they've got bronchitis, they'll get value 2. And then I'll give them the three labels there. So if we run that, we'll get another variable as well. Close the output window. Go back to here. And here we are. If we look on the value labels, we'll have them as well for that condition. There we are. Right, so to get this bar chart, I'm interested in to see how dead space reacts um, to, to different conditions and if they're normal, I just use box plot 
normal, a uh, simple, define. And then we can height in the variable box, and we'll have condition in the category axis. Click OK. And then in the output window, look down here. And there it is. We have a three box plot with condition down the bottom, asthma from chitis normal, and height along the side there. Actually, what we wanted was dead space, wasn't it? But that's quite interesting. It shows that the condition, for each condition, the height of the subject goes up. So we haven't really got a random sample compared to height, and we know that height is highly correlated with dead space. So we probably expect because we've got unequal groups concerning height, we probably expect the dead space to go up anyway, regardless of their condition. So we'll go back and do that again. And there we are. So now we've got condition and dead space. And it looks pretty much the same as condition and height. And if you remember, we found there were very high correlations between the two, so we'd expect that. To carry out our first analysis, looking at the bronchitis and asthma status um, in terms of a linear regression and dead space, we just simply carry out the same thing as we did before, analyze, regression, linear, dependent variables, dead space, and there are two independent variables, asthma, bronchitis. and statistics I'd ask for the competence intervals and the part and partial correlations as well click continue OK and here are results if we look down here that's identical to what we had Campbell has in his book so that's saying those who asthma have 44 units less dead space than those without us work that are normal and similarly those from bronchitis have 25 units less dead space compared to the, the normals. If we notice the first one is significant if we take 0 0.05 as a critical value and this one isn't we're not prepared to accept this value parameter value will accept the parameter value of equal in zero instead. So to ca we carry out the same analysis again to get the comparisons between the asthmatics and the bronchitics. And we do that by repeating the analysis, linear regression. This time we have in it normal instead of bronchitis. That's why I needed to create that variable. Click OK. And now we have this value here, asthma, which is between asthmatics and bronchitics, and the normal parameter, which is between normals and bronchitics. You can find more explanation if you look into um, Campbell's book. Now, I just want to mention that you can actually carry out a similar type of analysis, be able to compare the difference between them using what's known as ANOVA. So if we go to compare means, Analyze, compare means, one way and over, and we put in a uh, dependent variable is dead space, and a factor this time is the other thing that I produced called condition, the other variable. And we look here, we've got some various options. I'm going to choose post hoc. This is to do with pair comparison, so it compares one for subgroup of another for each level. So we'll choose two key. Continue and say we'll also have I think in the options we'll have descriptives mean plots. So we've got descriptives and mean plots there in the options and we'll click OK. And this gives us a mean value for our three groups. 
we look down here, we have a plot showing the means for each of those three groups, just like our box plot, but given slightly different detail, or less detail, you should say. It's because ANOVA is purely based on assessing means within and between groups. And here we have what's known as post hoc tests. And if you look here, we've got a thing called Tukis HSD. And if we compare the significance values, there we have asthma versus normal is significant, and bronchitis groups are not significantly different from any other group, and that's it really. It's asthma and normals. The two only groups are different, which is exactly the same as we discovered coming out of two pairwise analyses. So we've carried out the last example in Campbell's chapter. And you can find a lot more detail in the actual book by Campbell, and also in Norman and Strainer's Biostatistics Multiple Regression chapter, where they talk about centering variables to help with interpretation. Well worth a read. Remember, we've only talked about the practical exercises in these YouTube videos, not really what they mean, what you should be looking for, or in terms of diagnostics, or perhaps sensitivity of your model, or power, or anything to do with these other more important subjects. So I recommend you definitely look at these books in further details. Bye.